But ain't nobody giving you that damn respect. Aljo wants nothing to do with Jan. Aljo's one of those guys who just can't get out of his own way. He's not like a dangerous fighter. This is where it gets tricky for me. This is where it doesn't sit well with me. Aljo's fucking up this whole press conference tonight. I thought that the, the judge blew that one. I is Aljamain Sterling the most disrespected UFC champion in history? Good question, Chael. Let's dive into it. To fully understand the enigma of Aljamain Sterling, we need to go back to 2020. After Cejudo vacated the belt, Sterling was hailed as the uncrowned king, while Jan faced skepticism for his relatively easy path to the title. When Aljamain Sterling was set to fight Corey Sandhagen one month before Jan versus Aldo, fans thought of this as the real title fight. After submitting Sandhagen in 90 seconds, who was undefeated in the UFC, he couldn't have had more momentum behind him. Peter Yan, on the other hand, was seen in the same light as Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies. A stoic Russian who was finishing legends of the UFC. However, doubts lingered about the legitimacy of his title shot, coming off a win over a 40-year-old, mostly retired Uriah Faber. Although he proved himself as the champion in a dominant showing over Aldo, he fought relatively few contenders on his path to the title. UFC 259 witnessed the inevitable clash between Jan and Sterling. After losing two of the first three rounds and on his way to losing the fourth, Aljo was hit with the infamous illegal knee. But even in winning the title via disqualification, the fans, media, or even Dana White had no problems with Aljamain Sterling. We only have a couple of rules in this sport. Don't poke his eyes, don't bite the son of a bitch, and don't kick him when he's down. He was visually distraught and made it very clear at the moment that he didn't want to win the championship that way. And uh, That's not the way I want to win. That's not the way I envisioned this. In the immediate aftermath, most of the negative press was aimed at Peter Yan for making such a poor lapse of judgment. It was an intentional knee. <laughs> so he got hit with a knee. However, in the hours after UFC 259 at Sterling's post-fight celebrations, the narrative was flipped. Ooh. 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 Aljamain became the villain and Yan the hero. Fans and media were outraged that Sterling would pose with the belt. They cast Aljamain away, labeled him as a fraud, and accused him of acting to win the title. In the days since, Sterling tried to make his case. Parading around with the belt, which is not what I was doing. I only started doing that with my friends and family telling me to take a picture with them. And because they posted it, I never posted it. I became the bad guy. And, I and all of a sudden, because they handed him a belt, because one of the very few rules in our sport was not followed and you turned on him. So I'm going to keep explaining myself for people to keep ignoring what I'm saying. So I was like, you know what? Let's flip the script and get people more riled up. Let's, flip, let's fan the flame a little bit. With a down opponent in this position. Give him what he deserves. Watch out, man. Yep! Bro! What the hell? Whoa, I'm Jan, and I'm not actually the child. I can't fight him much. As Aljamain's antics raged on, resentment for him grew louder. As such, demand for their rematch grew just the same. One month after their fight, Sterling went under the knife to fix a career long neck injury. He required disc replacement surgery to fix a herniated disc. As expected, the surgery didn't sit well with the fans, but it turned out that the surgery was desperately needed. Dude, I had a very serious neck injury. I couldn't do push-ups. I hit the bag. I was getting radiating pain down my arm. It was spilling out into the, the spinal column and pushing on the nerve. And they said, if it doesn't unblock within two to four weeks, like I could just lose muscle. Despite a delicate recovery being required, the UFC booked Sterling to face Peter Yan in Abu Dhabi soon after surgery. However, Sterling had to pull out from the fight one month prior, citing lingering nerve issues from the neck surgery. His withdrawal from the fight gave fans even more ammunition to fire, accusing him once more of being afraid of Yan. 
Furthermore, Corey Sandhagen went on to replace Sterling and face Jan in a fight of the year contender for the interim strap. The fight was initially very close, but Jan pulled away, further pushing the narrative that Jan was the real champion of the division. It seems that fans quickly forgot that Aljamain only needed 90 seconds to finish Sandhagen, not 25 minutes. Inevitably though, the fight was booked. The fight was to take place in the Republican state of Florida, yet the American champion was booed and the Russian was cheered. Put the boogeyman to rest and shut everybody up. Remind the world who the fuck master is, baby, let's go! I finally get to shut this up and it's gonna be so sweet. He's Brazilian, you know, he's dirty, he's a dirty fighter. Man, Sterling shocks the crowd and silences the noise. Guaranteed. Bet your f***ing money. Put your money up. The belief was that if Aljo would just rematch Jan, the whole world would be right. Jan will go and beat Aljo, take his belt back, and we forget this chapter ever happened. Everybody goes back. This was the belief. Aljo didn't follow the script. However, instead of receiving the praise of fans, they stuck even harder to their preconceived narrative that Peter Yan was the champion. I thought that the, the judges blew that one. I thought I had it three to two the other way. After the fight, Sterling called out TJ Dillashaw and named him as the next title contender. Hey, TJ Dillashaw, where the you at? You next percent TJ Needleshaw, TJ Pillashaw, TJ everything under the sun. They were set to fight at UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. But despite Dillashaw being a proven drug cheat and career long bad guy, it was Sterling once again who received the role of villain and the booze that come along with it. Last time, I wonder if there's something going on again that it might be a little fishy, TJ. Oh, you're gonna get your ass whooped by a cheater, motherfucker. I can't you hear you like I that. Can't hear you. Speak up like a man. He's so worried about it, he can come test me himself. He could test these nuts in his mouth. Dillashaw, one of the greatest bantamweights of all time, was to return to the division where he never lost the belt and return it to the rightful owner. But what did Aljamain do? Aljo didn't follow the script. <laughs> However, even in victory was he undermined. The crowd was silent and fans scolded Sterling for taking two rounds to finish a one-armed Dillashaw. Yet few criticized Dillashaw for holding up the division and taking a fight which he clearly had no chance of winning. My opinion, for whatever that is worth, is they made a mistake sending him out there. They made a mistake. If your shoulder is that fucked, you need to get it medically addressed. He leaves her as the champion of the world, now everybody's mad. Everybody's upset. And they're so upset that there's one way that we can fix this for sure. We can bring in the greatest and most decorated combat athlete in the history of time. We get rid of Aljo, the world can then be fixed. Aljo didn't follow the script. But even Henry Cejudo couldn't do it. And still! Sterling won a razor thin split decision victory and was once again booed by the crowd. But this time in New Jersey, just two hours away from his hometown in Uniondale, New York. I can be as Aljamain the fuck master Stella. Be me. You step in the cage, I'm a drag <laughs> up and down the octagon, and that's it. It seems that fans have an issue with how Sterling is winning, but in actuality, all that matters is that he wins. Aljamain Sterling sits as the champion in the most competitive division and has done so for over two years. He has wins over three of the top five and is the second longest reigning champion in the UFC behind Alexander Volkanovsky. Aljamain Sterling has proven himself time and again as a champion, yet he remains overlooked and disrespected. He cannot be accused of being an actor when he showed clear signs of concussion. Although combat sports fans reward toughness with their cheers, the fighters never win in the end. I don't even know what happened. It's like I kicked in the head. And although Dana's comments pointed otherwise. Uh, Aljo went to the hospital, he's cleared, nothing. 
MRI scans are categorically unable to detect concussions. Post-fight, Aljamain made no celebratory post. It was his best friend and training partner, Marab, who handed him the belt and posted the images. From escaping a family trapped in domestic violence to becoming the champion of the world, Aljamain Sterling should be an inspiration to people everywhere. So let's not make the same mistake as before and give Aljamain Sterling the respect he deserves. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more from the definitive channel for mixed martial arts.